Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mark Komen from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. Welcome to our annual presentation of product, a presentation of projects with the Advanced Photography Group here at the Creative Photo Academy. You know, we started Advanced Photography in 1991, and for the last 15 years, we have been doing the projects. It's an honor and a pleasure to have everyone here tonight. So what we're gonna do is we have 17 projects to run through. If you have in front of you the program that I emailed you, you may wanna open that on your screen or print it out real quick. In that program, you'll find the 17 artist statements and the titles of the projects. You'll see the order in which they'll be presented. And I know many of you are rooting for a specific family member or friend, but I would invite you to stay for the whole thing because all of the projects are awesome. All of the photographers put a year's worth of work into them and it's just gonna be a great evening and a great creative artistic adventure tonight. Um, so what I'll do is I'm gonna share my screen here. We'll go through, um, you'll see a presentation, about 12 pictures. Then our panelists will comment on the picture. You'll get to hear a little bit from the photographer as well. And um, are we ready to go? Jill, are you ready? Ready. Dennis, you ready? Photographers, are you ready? Oh yeah. All right. Yep. All right. So can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Hold on. Is it full screen? Yep. Yes. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Paul's photo and the Creative Photo Academy. We're in Torrance, California. It's nice to see so many of you from around the country and around the world. Even Hobart, Tasmania. That is so cool. All right, so welcome to Advanced Photography Presentation of Projects. We call this evening Perspectives, where 17 photographers get to share their work. And as their leader, their mentor, their guide, I'm Mark Komen. It's my honor and pleasure to have been working with these photographers for a year. And of all of the groups that we have shared over the 30 plus years since 1988 at the Creative Photo Academy for, for reasons I don't have to mention, this group has put out the most extraordinary area of effort. Um, we start this in January and we started with a live class and had to pivot in March to an online class. And most of the photographers had to abandon their original ideas for a project and start over again in March and April. And I'm very, very proud of this group for the work they did, the quality of the work they present, they're presenting tonight, the effort they put into this to make these projects go under these difficult times. And for us as photographers and artists, I think it's important that we have this ability to share, to comment, to create, because for me, it's been part of my sanity over the last 12 months to be able to be creative every day with the camera. So thank you all for being part of this. Thank you for being with us tonight. And I wanna to introduce to you the panel. You met Jill Sanders briefly from Jill Sanders Gallery in Redondo Beach. Jill was trained at Otis in New York. She's a classic landscape scenic photographer who has makes amazing prints and these beautiful wall size mural enlargements that are fantastic. You wanna say hi to everybody, Jill? Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss, Jill? Um, what did I miss? Uh, well, thanks for letting me do this with you. I love doing this with you, Mark. It's great. And I wanna um, really give you kudos for everything you've done with the whole pandemic and kept your creativity every day. And the class of you guys doing this and just showing that nothing can stop artists, you know, we, we rock, you know, we just, you, nothing stops you. If anything, stuff like this makes you create better, better images because, you know, it's a way to, um, you know, create that, that focus and get away from something else that can wear you out. So great job doing that and making this happen for everybody. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. And ladies and ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Dennis Keeley. Dennis is a creative photographer. He is a music photographer, a street photographer. And Dennis is the chair of photography at the Art Center College in Pasadena. 
Um, Dennis has been a longtime friend and supporter of Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. And um, I really look forward to Dennis's insights. You want to say hi to everybody, Dennis? Hi, everybody. It's a, it's a great night. Um, you know, I've taught in, at UCLA in adult education. I've taught in, at, Arts, at Art Center. I've taught at UCLA. I've taught at Cal Arts. I love the fact that there's many paths to, to learning. I love that people leave their armchair and, and go make a difference in their life. And uh, you don't have to go to Art Center to, to become an artist. You, you can do that at home. You can do it at Paul's. You can do it. It's really about um, a commitment. And, and I love being in rooms like this where people have made that commitment already. So uh, I'll always come back and do this, Paul. Uh, I can't well, thank, thank you, you, Dennis. It's so awesome. Me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, photographers, for sharing. Thank you, family and friends. I want everyone to feel welcome. Are you guys ready to go? Well, here we go. Here, here we go. So ladies and gentlemen, our first photographer is Ray DeVito and her seaside stroll. Good evening, everyone. When I was 10 years old, I went to the downtown Cleveland Christmas parade. It was so cold. I remember saying, when I grow up, I'm going to move somewhere that's warm with an ocean. And I did it. Join me as I take my seaside stroll. Thank you, Ray. Ray DeVito's seaside stroll. Thank you, Ray, that was fantastic. So Thank Jill, you. do you have any comments for us? So I'm, I'm the first, this is where it is the nerve wracking thing. Um, I do have comments. I've made notes on all everyone's work. So um, I can, I, there's two things, Ray. Hi, Ray, by the way. Hello. Um, um, I like the notes that I made too, and looking at this again is great, is I like the use that you use of angled lines. A lot. I think that's great. Of uh, you know, whether in the shadows or in the sand with the um, the sand. I don't know what that thing is that tills the sand. Um, but I think as a as a whole, there's some things too. I'd like you to um, like kind of edit together because some looks like the lifestyle images, and then some looks like they're minimal with the um, the volleyball net. Uh, the, the feet, you know, walking with the foam and it's, it's, it's beautiful, you know, they're like fine art pieces. And then the other ones with like the kids and the guy doing the cartwheel, that's the more lifestyle. So sometimes it just gets like, it stops like the flow a little bit of what that is. And then I also thought some of them you could have cropped a little bit. And I was just saying, I wanted to make a note to this because your image was strong and I didn't want you to feel that you were, um, controlled by the frame of your camera is not your boundary. It's whatever you see in your head. So I always like to make that a note because people think you have to get exactly what's in your, your camera. Um, but other than that, yeah, I definitely, uh, I, I liked it. I got your whole, your whole sense of your stroll and enjoying the morning and everything that you saw around you. Thank you. Mark, can you run these again while we talk about them? Sure, I can do that. Yeah, because I'll just talk about them. I, I just want to, I want to comment on on the flow of these, and and that I, I really do feel like you're taking me on that walk, and I, and I love that that there's this this sense of journey, and and I think photography is all about storytelling. It's it's the the edit that that you've done. It's in a way too tight for the, the, the kind of um, thing you're trying to say, which is that I'd love to see 20 more pictures 
and and that 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 morning light is really beautiful. It's not Cleveland, is it? <laughs> um, and and there really is a celebration of of, of the California light, the, the the water, the the. I think the most powerful picture is is the feet in the sand because it. I don't I actually the mechanical part of it is not so important to me because it seems like it's it's your journey and that and that uh, um, that that's such a poetic scene that uh, and and I, and I also like your lines in these they they. They do lead you back into the picture. Um, I think one of my favorite parts of this is the distance between you and everybody else. So the the cartwheel, while it's 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 interesting, I like the fact that that it feels like you're alone and and that that all these these areas of activity are farther away, and that that you've really taken this thing um, as a as almost a meditation in the morning. So. It, it, it really has a great feel. I'd love to see you expand on this. Thank you very much. And by the way, those are my feet in the I sand. Can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the lifeguard one too, the, 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 with the flag. I love those lifeguard towers. They, they, uh, they really punctuate the landscape really nicely. Um, yeah, great landscape. Thank, Thank you, Ray. Ray. Thank you. Our next photographer, Brian Ward, never resist creative urges. Good evening, all. I'd just like to mention, I've known these artists that have you were seeing a small sample of their work uh, for a long time. And I've, over the years, I affectionately referred to them as wild women with paintbrushes. But as you'll see in these pictures, their creativity is far more than paintbrushes. So with that, enjoy the show. Ryan Ward's never resist creative urges. Dennis. So you've really done something remarkable here in, in marrying portraiture with documentary with 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 really exemplifying the the, the nature of these women's work. And and you've stayed really faithful to to the meaning of it and and, and you didn't didn't make it all um, uh, Going to use a word here that, that I shouldn't, but you didn't make it photographic. You really made it artistic, and and you really met them in that space where their important work is is in doing, and and your important work was in in respecting that. And and this is actually one of my the most favorite one of all of them because it really it really speaks to that that process and. Um, the, the ones that are finished are nice, but I, I love seeing people at work. Um, it, it, it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a process. And, and uh, when, you, when you bring people into that process, they can see why people make art. And, and it's, not, it's not, so, not such a mystery. Um, it's a beautiful, um, and, and like the first person, I'd love to see more of this. You made me want to see more work and, and more about the works that, that are made. Um, hands are really important in these. And uh, uh, it, it's, you know, a photograph can be anything. And uh, um, some people would not put the hands in there. It's a, it's, a, it's a very special thing to recognize what it is that you do and what it is that you believe in. and. And, and show people what that is. Take the risk to show people what, who you are 
and, and not necessarily who they are, but who you are and, and what you see and share with people that. The Thank only you. criticism I probably have is I don't like the first picture as the introduction. I, I think that a, um, a, a bodies of work have a beginning, a middle and an end. The beginning is the introduction. You got to get people's attention. The middle is the body of work. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the content. And you, you leave people with a memorable image. You leave people with something that they remember forever. But uh, um, I, think, I think the introduction is, can't be your best picture. It's the one that leads people in. But um, this one's a beautiful content picture. OK, thank you. Uh, Jill? Hi, Brian. Hi. Um, so I found your work very um, emotional. <laughs> I don't know. It hit me. Like I made some notes and said, maybe because I'm a female artist, but the, the working hands is what is the thing I noticed the most, except for this one, the aged hands. And can you go to the one mark with the um, one with the, the woman, uh, like the clock? Yeah, this one, the one with the clock. And this one I love because just seeing, I don't know, the Band-Aid and, you know, the detail of what they're working. And then I don't know if you meant to do this, but this is what I read into it where I see this clock and it's like after five. And I, and to me, it's like, you know, it, there's not a, a corporate time frame for being an artist. You're, you're always working after five. You have the continual, continual thing I kind of liked. Um, and the tones that you have, they also look like they're sort of film stills in a way. So it's something in the past. So it takes you to those memories of yourself or, you know, family members you had or that, I mean, that these are just the feelings that I'm getting from it and watching it. And the, the, the next ones, the older hands with the um, aging women, I just kind of felt like how women never really stop being fertile. They're always able to create. And it's like, even though you see their lives in their hands, you see this art that they're still always creating and bringing things to life. And so I just found that really moving all these hands just still, you know, just, just well done. And I've known quite a few women that have made it into their nineties and they're amazing painters. And it's just, you just captured exactly like their passion is just the detail of their art constantly and, and but seeing their lives in their hands. So it was quite moving. Great. You know, Jill, you bring something up that, that's, that's really important. It's, I, I hope you're making some short films about this and that, that, uh, that camera that makes stills also usually makes video. And there's something about the activity of this that, that in, its, in its scale would be really quite manageable and, and really quite beautiful. It would be. That would be great. Okay. I'll definitely work on that one. Yeah. The working hands. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our next artist, Teresa Carroll, The Marsh You've Never Seen. Good evening. Um, I've always loved black and white photos. And when I first saw infrared photography, I knew I had to do it because it's a rather ethereal and sometimes eerie form of black and white. So I shot the Madrona Marsh in its various times of the year this past year. Teresa Carroll's The Marsh You've Never Seen. 
Jill, are you ready? So what's funny with your title, hi, Teresa. Hi. Uh, is that I'm born and raised here in the South Bay and I've never seen the Madrona Marsh. <laughs> I've never been there. <laughs> so thank you for sharing this. Um, so infrared is interesting that you've done. I have not, I mean, it's, I, I'm not even up to this one because I don't even know. Is it, is it truly just film? It's, you're actually shooting film, right? No, I got a camera that I've had the sensor changed out. So it shoots in the infrared spectrum only. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, because it's just like, keep. I just remember that from school back in the day. So um, perfect timing for you to be shooting something and making a statement like this with infrared because it definitely has that nuclear holocaust type of feel to it. You know, it, it's eerie as all get out. Um, and it's, and I can't ever question why. I mean, um, this white glow in the darkened sky and, and the way that you have like this woman here, the back to her, you know, I like that there's not that connection with her and you're, you can't really connect to nature because it's not the norm that you see or how you know it, which is more welcoming and inviting and grounding. And this is very distant, kind of abrupt, anyway, which I kind of think is, is the point, you know, not being calm. Can you go to the next one, Mark? Yeah. And these, you just get kind of lost in them. Um, so I said, uh, in infrared, Jill, yeah. anything that's green appears white. Yeah, it's it's an odd thing. I used to shoot the city in it, so it was a little different. You try and get that effect of this. So it's it's great. I, my favorite one in here is the one where you're looking right at the water, and it's very balanced image with the black lines of the branches. Um, this one. Um, I'm like pointing to the screen like you guys can see me. <laughs> see right here, see how it's doing that? Yeah, that's what I love. Um, this part I, here. Yeah, this part, this part here. I love, I love the square that it makes the diamond or whatever on the right and in the center, the left. I like that it's positive, negative. And so this takes me into more linear and conceptual, not so much of making that sort of, um, you know, emoting those feelings of kind of the eeriness, like you said. So this one, and then the one right before, I think, Mark, go to the one. I like this one, yeah. So these two are my favorite. I, this one's great. I mean, just, uh, yeah. I love this one with the, I mean, that's really wordy of me, yeah. Um, just these, this, I don't know what kind of weeds these are or whatnot that stick up, but I love that and the difference between that and then the, the foliage around it, the trees. It's, um, it's super. And I guess only in making little critiques on this is I'm, I then again, not knowing infrared, it distracts a little bit in some of the um, like sensor marks that I do see on the images. Mm. I, I, I wish that those were gone, um, but that's easy to do. This one is, is, yeah, great. I'd like to start with that one. If we go back to that. The, this one, Dennis? First, yeah, first of all, you can't see in black and white and you really can't see in infrared. So the, the, the effect is it, 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 it overwhelms most of what you do, except that this is the one where, where the, the technique really matches the landscape and, and, the, and the, the composition. It's really, it's a, it's a wonderful weight and balance. The, the tree on the right really lands it. Um, the, the, the way that you've composed this is almost perfect. And, and I, yeah, I'm troubled by the little glitches as well because it's such a perfect uh, plane of, of, of information. Mm -hmm. The thing I would be careful of is that everything isn't up to this, and that um, you know most of the most of the mistakes we make in our pictures are in the corners. So so when we really study the thing and and really take time to to look at landscape and to see what's what's essential and what isn't, it's that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna move in, you're gonna back out. It's gonna be all in the corners, and some of these pictures you're looking in the middle the way I'm looking in the middle. This, one's, this one really lands it because 
as my eyes go out to the to the edges, there's there's a perfect balance in this. Um, um, I, I probably in, in in terms of making this work in in the middle of a pandemic, the eerie part of it. I probably wouldn't have any people in these pictures. Um, I think it's a land uh, uh, unseen, but also um, almost left to, to its own process. And and I and I love the fact that that there's paths for people. I like the fact that there's there's a there's a sense of of scale and near and far. Um, but uh, you know, you've made your own rule here. This is the one. This is the one that you have to hold all the others to and say, really, what am I thinking? And, and in the bigger picture, Mark, I really haven't been able to see how people have changed their projects. These seem to be the right projects. So uh, as you had them rethink or they rethought, I seem to think that they've done the right thing. So I congratulations. I started with this project so I didn't have to change. Right, it seems that way. Yeah. You still go there? Um, I drive by it every time I go to Mark's store. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> the secret spot I discovered was Chevron Corner. My personal favorite is the one of the bridge with the with the older man and the young man standing on it. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's the that one. Mm hmm. That's a personal favorite of mine. There, there's something great about them not looking at camera. That that they 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 become, you know, grammar in the scene. They they really land it in a in a place where um, you become observing them. They are observing something else, and, and that's a nice thing for a picture. Pictures are all about stories. They're always about storytelling. I love the infrared world. I I really do. Congratulations, it's a really successful body of work. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Teresa. Our next artist, ladies and gentlemen, Beverly Gates, Painting with Water. Hi, I'm uh, Beverly Gates and uh, my project this time, I've never submitted as many uh, abstract photos as I, or worked with as many abstract photos as I did with this uh, project. Um, all of my images were influenced by water and I enjoyed working with the lines and shapes and designs. I'm not sure what story it tells, but I was fascinated with some of the things that I saw and ended up taking pictures with. I found them intriguing and some of them mysterious and, and that's my project. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Beverly. Dennis, are you ready? I am. Yeah, I'm always shocked that that artists make this work, and then we, when we ask them to talk about, it, they're not sure about what it's about. They're not sure what the story is. That 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 they seem to be abstract, and they seem to we're not sure what what literal story they tell. But um, actually, they tell a story about 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 you, about what you see, about what, what excites you. And in sharing that with others, there's a risk involved. There's always a risk. And, and the, the worst work is the work that takes no risks. And, and uh, in showing people who you are and showing people that, that you wanna explore something, you're enlisting them in, in your story, in your journey, in your, in your path. And, and um, um, 
I couldn't help but go with you and, and, and to be excited about the sequence. Um, so different from the other things we've said about work, this is really not about the comp composition so much as it is about this vision. And uh, it's a really strong um, sensibility and, and using simple, simple, simple things like water, like air, like dirt, like, like plants, like things that come from the earth are, are, are the things that artists make work about. And, uh, um, uh, and, and yes, do we psychologically second guess everything we do? Uh-huh. Um, from the beginning to through the middle to the end. And, and um, I think it was Baudelaire that said that art is never finished, it's merely abandoned um, because you, you make as much of it as you possibly can. And then you're kind of done. And, and when you're done, you move on to the next thing. But this is a, a beautiful um, um, body of work. It's, 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 it's really quite poetic, it's lovely. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Jill? Hi, Beverly. Hi, hi Jill. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wrote in big, strong letters, Sarah Strong. Um, I think they have a great flow. The work is really balanced. Um, I said, my favorite thing that I think about this is that I look at and I see, I see the, <sighs> What is it in the terms that they put here? I see your form, your shapes, your lines. I don't sit there and see water and then go, okay, let's hope that there's form and lines and shape in it. I see this for what it is like this. I, I love it. And it's so balanced, all the colors, the flow, the colors balancing off each other. And I like that this is blurred enough, you know, to not, again, try and picture what it really is. And I think that's what makes it really strong this way because then it's just like you know doing abstract paintings in the sense that it's about you know the shapes and lines of what you're doing i wrote um number i have a heart next to number 10 and 11 <laughs> are my favorite ones um and i would love to see these printed um print big you know very like this one it's great i can just see these in some can't you uh, mark and see that in some Big house in Manhattan Beach, a big six foot print. <laughs> on, a, on, on, a, on, a, on a big metal print, huh, Jill? On, on, on metal. Yeah, they're Absolutely. great. And or, or, yeah, they just really are with that nice flow. I just think it's a very, very successful series of work together just and, and individually, each piece individually is, is what's so solid about it. I don't really have- I'd love any. to see them hung in a room in sequence. Uh, I think it would be yeah. great to see them as a, as a in relationship to another one to another, um, if I was looking at these in prints, I'd be spreading them out. I'd be looking at them, uh, um, how they have a relationship to to one another. The color is beautiful. You you really you really nailed some some shifts and some some. Uh, um, it's a good adventure. But again, to look at this one right here and to, you're looking at it as the image itself is instead of thinking, oh, that's the reflection in a pool or that's yeah. what so many people do. You see it for simply what it is as its own art form. Very good. Thank you, panel. Thank you, Bev. These are awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our next artist, John Schmidt and translucence. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I enjoy seeing how light reflects and penetrates and, and highlights objects uh, to expose things that you may not see with, without the light presence. And so I hope you enjoy these pictures that are, explore translucency. Thank you. 
Very nice, John. Very Jill, nice. are you ready? I think so. Um, can you go to number five? Which one is number five? I don't have the numbers here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> one, two, okay. three, four, five. Hi, John. Um, I I really like, the, okay, you've got a couple of different flows here. I love these ones that have the center focus with like the black around, quite a few of them, like the one with the lemon lit from behind and and one of the, the shells right, right in the center. I like all of these, how it's just like, this is it, translucence come through and see the detail. Um, this one's actually my favorite one. I think that's great. Um, I think with um, the continual flow of your work, like that's, see, okay, this one right here, you don't, you, you also can't identify where the light is coming from. It's just bright, it has it, then you're following all the detail of the vortex of this, this shell. And uh, there was another one that you could kind of see where the light was coming from. Um, it was more like this one, a little bit harsh on the ground, the ground of it, that one a little bit too close because you can, the, the shadows, instead of it just being on the focus of the shell, which like the lemon and the other one, it seemed like you also had a little of the more detail in the front of the image so you could, so just trying to keep that consistency is what I'm saying, um, if that makes sense in a way. And then the, the first image, with the rose, the only one, not sorry, the third one. This is the only one that I didn't care for because it's got two different properties in it. And it's not really focusing on the translucency of this glass with your shells or rocks, what they are in there coming through. And the, all the other ones just went boom, boom, boom of really focusing on the center weight and the detail within each object. But I thought it was, I thought it was very strong and and neat thing to do to kind of see the different lighting because we're always lighting from the front or the side, you know, or diffuse. So that was a great, a great way to play with light. Thanks. I, I agree with you. I, I think this is more than about translucence. It's about the light. And, and you know, in school, we, we do this exercise about the ball cube and cylinder and how we, we create shape and, uh, you know, light has, has has quantity, how much light there is, the quality of it, is it hard or soft? And then, and then, and then we look at the direction of it and, and the direction coming forward on this one is really nice. I don't need the rose. Um, if we go back one, um, that's, that's, that says everything. The, the forms there are so strong, um, the light, the way the light is hitting these. But the strongest one is the lemon. The lemon is the, you had me there. Um, <laughs> I, I could look at that all day. Yeah. There's, there's just a sense of, of, I can almost taste that thing. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sense of, of how that lands, that just, um, it, it's, everything is right with it. Um, I also love the screwdrivers. I think um, as a as a guy who runs a program about product, makes makes those those dull objects come alive. It really it makes them seem like they're taking off. And and how to make the the inanimate animated is is really quite a wonderful thing for an image maker to 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 explore. So. Uh, um, I'd, I'd continue this project. I think you should find more things that 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 surprise people because I was surprised by how many things that I take for granted that that we take these common things, and until a photographer shows us something new about it, um, we don't look at it. We look past it. So uh, yeah, I love I love the fact that it's it's screwdrivers, um, and and it's a way I've never seen them before. So uh, um, when I think about them again, um, I'll be thinking about your picture. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Our next artist, Chuck Greenwood at home. Hi guys. Um, my wife and I have lived in this house for um, a little over 30 years. 
And throughout the years, we've um, done a lot of remodeling and uh, redesigning to make this house, not a house, but our home. And we're still married after 30 years. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Chuck Greenwood's at home. Dennis, are you ready? I am. So I was a little, um, my, my mind was wandering in some of them, but the, 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 the last picture, the, the, the one at the fireplace, it really says home and um, there, the, the resolution of this was was wonderful. Um, I said this before. I want to I, I want to say it again that that all these pictures, all the things that we're going to see tonight, regardless of how abstract they are or how literal they try to be, or or it's it's all about storytelling. It's all about beginning, middle, and end. And um, the the, the the constructed narrative here, um, I think these pictures start in the wrong place and that I'm left wanting to know what the, what the container is. Like, so what's the house? Where's, what, what says house to me? And, and the rooms that are in this house, I almost want to feel like I've walked up the front steps and then I'm in the house and then I can see the, the details. Um, I'm, I'm actually quite fascinated with the things that you have on your walls. It, it speaks to somebody who, who goes places and brings things back to their home that enriches their lives, that enriches their home. And, and, and I think that's a really important detail that's not lost in these pictures. The, the, I think the only thing missing is that introductory picture. Um, and, and I'll go back to one thing. Artists are not the best people. We make assumptions about things that, um, that, that in showing your work to others, it, it becomes important for you to gather that information about what, what, how people feel. And, and uh, um, it's great that, that there is this quality of interior space and, that, and, the, and just like the last person, this kind of quality of light and, and the details that talk to us about who you are, really, really, really important. Um, and, and I love this picture. Um, um, I think Veronica and I have sat around for, since March. <laughs> so uh, I know this picture well, um, and it, it, really, it really screams like, so what are we gonna do today? And I think that's really a wonderful way to start, you know, thinking about pictures. So. Um, thanks for sharing this. Thank you. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Jill. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Good to see you so again. This image is is just so powerful. I just made a note of that too. Um, I I see more of it just in the, the relationship, but I said it it convey it conveys conveys the relationship instead of defining like who you two are individually. It just with a light silhouette of you two and so balanced out perfectly with the drapes and the photo on each side and the, the chair and the windows. It's like you're the, you've become the mirror of each other, you know, and then the yin and the yang with the black and the white mug. Am I going too far with this, this, translation no. of this one? I just saw so much. It's such a strong, strong image. It's just amazing. So this one kind of, I just got lost in this. And then when you went into the house, I, I was like, oh, I wanna see more of the couple though. You know, it was just great. But what I see when we look through this home is 
one, you guys are so tidy. And two, <laughs> <laughs> the pictures. I know it's like that. You didn't just like, you know, wake up and take pictures of the house, you know. Um, but there's such a pride. I mean, like here at the, you know, to have this 1997, you know, like the shield, is it a trophy? Is it a, you know, a honoring, a thing you're honored to get? And then with your book and then the, the next one with the teacup and, or this one, this alludes to, you know, having a nice drink and lighting candles and setting a mood in the evening and the shell representing kind of peace. And then, yeah, the whole comfort, this, just that, and the teacup looks like one that could have been passed down even from, you know, one of your parents that you cherish when you guys make your, you know, your pressed coffee or whatnot that you do. So it takes you to these things that makes you question more of the relationship where you guys are from and where you're going. So it, it leads you on to a lot of, a lot of that. So yeah, and just the pride of what you've built continuing. And I, I agree with Dennis. I think just the first image um, did not go, even though I know you're very proud of that image. I, this to me would be the first image, not, not someone, the one of you and Mark. Um, even though I know you're, you're so proud of Kilimanjaro, bravo, amazing. And it's part of, you know, the pride I would have that elsewhere in the home of, of showing an accomplishment you made in your lifetime living there. But, but it's, it doesn't, I don't see that as it's sharing you and your wife together. Right. Well, that's actually not my first image. That's just a cover story image. My first image was intended to be that next image, actually. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's, that, as, as far as it goes to the story itself, this is the first image. It's the first image. Yeah. yeah just fantastic image, this image. Yeah. Thank so you, I, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. No, I want to say one thing real quick. Like, the one thing I learned out of this project is I do not want to be a real estate photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I've said. Good job, Chuck. Thanks, bud. Our next artist, Linda Detweiler Burner. Game on. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here tonight. And uh, I think you'll uh, enjoy this. Uh, I was one of those people who had a journey of a different idea for this project. And then COVID hit. We had shut down and some challenges of doing some photo things with Mark that kind of inspired this in some ways. And also the fact that I found that I was gonna be laid up for four to six weeks because I had to have surgery. So um, it became very realistic or real to me that you're not going anywhere for a while. So you better pick up something that you can do. And so uh, some of the greatest works that artists have produced sometimes have been under circumstances that have not been great. So uh, this is a creative tune for me and a little different. And also the other thing too, what kind of inspired is thinking about Saturday nights and playing games growing up, either with family or friends at a camp out or whatever. And uh, so this is my, uh, my take on it. So hope you enjoy. Linda's great rendition of Game On. Jill, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, hi, Linda. Hello. Hi, Jill. So, so much fun. These are, these are just so much fun and great. Um, takes me on the journey, takes me back to um, playing all those great games. And you just made it like complete, like, you know, a story with each one. Um, can we go to some of the images, Mark? Sure. Which one, Jill? Just any of them. Like, like this. I mean, it's just great. It's they're kind of like, um, you know, remind me of 
marketing. Yeah. At the same time, like Mark, how we were talking the other day about Cindy Sherman. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just, I love how you're just creating this odd sense of, uh, of levity with life. It's just uh, lack of words, having fun. <laughs> I mean, just kept laughing at you. Which is so great because it takes people into the story and you're not so much doing the thing when you're normally talking, you know, the composition and lighting and all this. You're just socked right into the the fun of the board game of life that you made it with your pets, with potato heads, with your, yeah. That was a word challenge. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and that you did that yeah I mean that you did the words and the clue the symbol of all of that what it is I mean just really well thought out what what made you um what made you conceptualize this to actually then to to create the characters that sort of come out of the board games where you become the characters in the games uh that kind of evolved because actually the challenge was the first piece to this was the potato head playing Monopoly I mean uh, playing Scrabble and if you look at the words, it says quarantine. It was when we were in the very beginning of shutdown. And um, so uh, that was one thing, just to have them kind of play and be a part of it. Okay, so that was the start. And then I had to figure out how I was going to make it flow. And some suggestions from the group saying, well, why don't you kind of dress up as some of the characters? I brought the potato head people in. Um, I bought them just for this project. Um, and then we just looked at what games we had and what we could dress up as. So. Um, just started having fun. I had old scrub from my, you know, from somewhere and we just had fun. Um, and my husband had a lot of fun being a kid, um, making this happen. So kind of, well, it's a great, know, it's a great job. Head. It's a great job. You made like theater, you know, come alive in your images. So it's kind of like theater mixed with it. And it, otherwise it would have been very mundane if it was just straight on pictures. So um, that, you know, taking the pictures was easy, getting this lighting and getting some of those to make the thing, this one just two lights in the attic. Um, and uh, it was fun, but it was difficult. It was frustrating. Mark will know, because he knows how frustrated I was with his project. So, um, but it turned out very well. So. Yeah, it's very, very great job. Thank you. You know, when you, when you start to invent things, it gets very difficult because the, the specificity of it is everything. Um, if, if I could beat my students to death, uh, we'd have conversations about depth of field every day. And um, you're using depth of field here remarkably well. It's, it's a, uh, you, a lot of the things that, that you struggled with, um, we don't see, we jump right into where that hand is, is, is touching that, that play piece and, and, um, it, if you ran depth the field through from the front piece, it'd be a terrible picture. Um, uh, the thing I remember about both Monopoly and um, uh, Scrabble is that my siblings used to just cheat at it ruthlessly. If you, if you got up, when you came back, you'd have no money and they'd have all the letters they needed. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I love that, that there's such playfulness in this, um, that, that you really, <laughs> Photography can be so deadly boring. This is this is so great with the finger on the page. Um, uh, it it really references something that's serious fun. You know, um, uh, uh, I think my parents used to come in and make us all go to our rooms because uh, it would be we'd be on the floor on top of each other. And and you've really told a wonderful story about these things. Um, using everything at hand. Like you said, two lights, um, sometimes that's all you need. Um, love your sense of play, love, love the invention in this. It, 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 it surprised me. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, L Linda. These are great. Thank you. I like that they're looking at the word virus too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, our next artist, Matt McMillan, Travel Totems. Hey, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us, our intrepid and talented group tonight. My project is on Travel Totems, which was inspired while reflecting on the international travel ban during this pandemic. 
And since this is the Creative Photo Academy, I pushed myself to try something new as a photographer and shot all these still lives while controlling light, manufacturing the background and imagining the composition to bring out the best in each of these souvenirs that I've collected over the past decade or so. I hope you'll enjoy this brief trip to the exotic locales around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt McMillan's Travel Totems. Uh, Dennis, are you ready? I am. The set of these images, the way you've presented them with, with all photographs have um, this, this sense of place, this sense of foreground, mid-ground, background. The, the, the settings that you've put these in tell us a lot about you and, and, and that, um, they are so fun and at the same time so um, curious. Uh, the, these, that's my favorite one, the, the iconic um, you know, Eiffel Tower. It's, it's in miniature, it is, it is as iconic as, as if you're there. It's a memory that you bring back from Paris. I, I don't, so I can't imagine that anybody goes there and doesn't see it or, or um, it's one of those, those <laughs> wonders of the world, and and to, to bring these things back, all these places you went, they all have that feeling of of um, that that memory or that 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 honor to them. Um, the, keep going, Mark. I want to see some. There's one other. Um, that one is so fun. Uh, great, great play with light. You are really using light in this in this intentional way, and uh, the composition, the the shape of the things in the frame, um, are, are very successful. Um, yeah, beautiful work. I think that's my other favorite one, because when we we think about the Far East, uh, go back one. There's such a sense of. Uh, of of that meditative, that, that sense of uh, at rest and uh, uh, of, of, of deep ancient knowledge. And I don't know how you convey that in a, in a trinket, so to speak, but you have. What do you think, Jill? Um, hi, Matt. Hello. Um, you know, I one thing that I that really stands out that I'm noticing is this effort and how you figured out to make these creative backgrounds for all your images. Um, that they just stand out, they complement so well. And then all of a sudden you start looking at like, okay, you've you've got the Eiffel Tower and you have that that the the camel, and then all of a sudden you're like, what's what's behind it? Because you know, some people would probably just have it and like, you know, try and focus on their what they've got here and add some different lighting to what this is, but it's great because you've created this whole special environment that complements what you're, um, you're sharing as well. So it's just so it's, it's like you've tried to create where they came from. Am I, am I right? Are you doing this or did you have, or just have a really creative home? <laughs> no, absolutely. I would, I would take like, like we have this metallic figure here and I wanted to, hey. to kind of showcase that, that, <laughs> that, that that scene so in think? some way um right. and and each each item i i took a lot of that's time. so funny that you said that because kevin always says the same thing my like, god all those people are so like they're ancient in there ray, <laughs> some young ray. And people in there are so ancient you know <laughs> someone else I'll say, I'll say yes 
I'll but say yes, but, um, that I, but, I did put yeah, a lot of thought some, into that. We had some people that weren't, mostly Asian, which is kind of interesting. And, Ray. And, and they, they didn't finish their projects. And, and uh, for maybe just because of, you know, work or because of COVID and just, you know. It's Ray just, DeVito. You know, year. Ray. But, um, I was kind of disappointed, you know. <laughs> Ray. Oh. Ray, everybody together. Ray, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that happens in class all the time. So, <laughs> can, can you guys see Don Quixote? Yeah, I, this. Okay. Yeah, I love the Don Quixote. You want to continue what you're saying? I couldn't hear everything you said. I'm sorry. You're, you're Absolutely, yeah. I would. I would take the. I would take the subject and really try to find a place that I could. I, I could create behind it to to bring that into the the subject's environment, so that, that it would be kind of two two pieces to it. Right, which is which is so well done because that's part of you know it's like anything in photography when people say, oh that's a great image and that they, they just think that it's always just you take your camera and it's there and you take the photo and it happens, and they don't realize no you, there's a lot more conceptualizing the image behind it, what you do to create it. So I think that's really successful and how you did that and each one of these images now, as, as you show them as a story together. I want to hear the story now. So I want to hear, well, tell me about, you know, Spain, tell me about, you know, your Japan or, you know, I want to, I want to hear, hear more about it in each one. So that, that's um, great. And I think that you also have, um, um, like what Dennis was saying on the um, prior images, the great depth of field on this too. I like that, yeah. that it, yeah, that you've got the sharpness of what you're focusing on, yet it's still, it's sharp not having the focus in the background that complements it. So it's well, well, well put together. Great Thank concept. You so much. Jill, I just take my camera out and make pictures. They just seem to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> take my camera out for a walk and... Uh... Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Our next photographer, Dan Andrada and Micropolis. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, as Mark mentioned at the beginning, uh, I also was one of the ones that had to pivot my, my uh, project because I see myself more as a, as a landscape photographer. But one of my favorite subgenres of landscape photography is uh, cityscapes. So, uh, if I couldn't get out and bring myself to the city, then I just had to bring the city to myself. So these images are uh, the project of doing just that. So I hope you enjoy it. Dan Andrada's Micropolis. Jill, are you ready? Yeah, I just think they're just beyond creative, just fantastic. Just love that they're in black and white, but just so well thought out every single aspect of it. And you can definitely tell you're a landscape photographer. And what's kind of nice about this, you can create the perfect environment, right? Not have to wait for the exactly <laughs> for that lighting, for the clouds, for the storm. Just well, well done in every every aspect of it. I mean, just even this is um, Dubai, I'm guessing. Right? Um, inspired by. Inspired, right. Inspired by. But even like how I, I question right away, like how did you create the starry sky and, and the lighting that you did before this just. And this one, this one just it looks so much like some of the um, cityscapes. Do you ever shoot the city like this, too, where you do the long exposure with the sky? And yes, and yes, I have, especially at night. Right, I'd love to see some of your work like that to see how it, too. Just you know, at another time, it's um because it's exactly how I see that this that perfect lighting like this. But just I, you know, just fantastic, just so well done. The time, creativity, just great. Thank you. So this is the first work I'm disappointed by because I would love to see these printed. 
I think as Prince, yeah. these would just kill me because the, the, the tones, the, the, the way that you really looked at the tones carefully and, and, and this would make, each one of these would be a beautiful print. Um, and, and I like seeing them on screen. I can see the composition. I can see the, the, the light, the shadow, the, the, the volumes, the, the, the careful comp compositions. And, um, and, and of course they, they land this way, whatever, whatever medium there is. But these are the ones that I just go, oh, I would love to see these printed on a, on a, on a, on a glossy, something that looked like a silver gel gelatin print. The black and, uh, grade three. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you, you know, you've, you've hinted all around Metropolis and, and, and very effectively you've referenced uh, some really strong, um, you know, future sci-fi kind of um, otherworldly kinds of elements in these. And, uh, and still, like somebody else, you've taken really common things that, that we take for granted, that, that we just um, don't look at every day. Every time I think I have a student who, who can't think up to make a project, I'll think of this work because it, it's really about, so can you go to the hardware store, store buy some things that, that, that really display what it is that, that you're passionate about? And that, that really comes through. It's really beautiful work. This one knocks me out. Um, it's like you've created this whole, this whole world inside your home. So uh, congratulations, beautiful work. Thank you. Yeah, there was, there was a class they used to have at Otis in their foundation year at school where they would um, send you to the um, hardware store and you had to make a musical instrument. Oh, that's great. And design something, so, you know, and it's, it's such a great way to think outside the box like this that I would think also besides you being so successful with this that you just had a great time doing it. Yes. Yes, yes. And so Dan, you want to share with them what it took to do this? Uh, hours. I think hours. it's obvious if you if you've ever set up a, a tumbling domino setup <laughs> layout, it was exactly like that. Yep. No. Many nights, one screw is all it took <laughs> oh my to start God. over. So you it was challenging in that respect. You don't have cats, right? <laughs> no, but <laughs> just one, just one sneeze, and that's it. And that might be done for the night. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you, Thank Jill. You. Thank you, Dennis. So ladies and gentlemen, we're at the midway point tonight. So if we'll, we'll take a five minute break, let everybody get up and stretch, grab some water, do what you need to do. It's uh, currently 10 minutes after the hour and at quarter past the hour, we'll be back. Okay, get some water. Yes.
get the deal last. That's a weird thing to say. Mark? I'm going to give her some food. Come on. All right. Well, good. Welcome back, everyone. I hope when everyone got a little bit of a break. Oh, I want to thank everyone for attending tonight. Um, as you can see, this is a labor of love for all of us, you know, for the photographers, for Jill and Dennis and I, um, we have a passion and, you know, the group, you see that they've done such an amazing job and starting from nothing. We all start every year with a blank slate, with a clean piece of paper, and then envision our project create the concept, make the pictures, edit it, and present it. Um, next year, we're going to be doing the same thing. Uh, you will get email from me tomorrow with a recording of tonight's session. So if you want to watch it again, if you want to pass it on to a family and friends, you'll also get an email from me detailing what the classes, what the offerings are at Creative Photo Academy if you want to join us. And whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced photographer, we have a place for you to gain inspiration, gain the skills, gain the knowledge. And all the classes are online like tonight. So many of you I know are not in the area and you are perfectly welling. You are perfectly accepted into the group. So yeah, so great, Patricia. Yeah. So pass it on. You know, you'll get the email tomorrow, you know, with the link to the to view this, you can do that. You can pass on the link to the other classes that we have. Um, for those of you who are interested in advanced photography, there are six classes in the advanced session. There are five class classes in intermediate, and then photo boot camp is for the beginners. And wherever you are in the skill set, we would love to have you join us. Um, the other thing you'll get an email from over the next couple days is so this is our usually our big expo weekend now we can't have an expo here at pulse photo because of the pandemic but we are going to have a very special deal for everyone which i can't talk about tonight you'll get an email on thursday detailing that but thursday friday saturday we'll do a special trade-in event and have a very special special offer on new cameras and used cameras and lenses for use. So um, hopefully you guys will all take care of that or be um, inspired by that. So I've been really loving what I see in the chat. Um, keep it up if you have specific questions for the photographers. And yes, all the pictures are for sale. So you, if you want one to, let, to be in your living room, that's awesome. If you want one of Jill's beautiful images, go to jillsandersgallery.com. I know Dennis loves to sell his prints and I'm sure all of our photographers would as well. So um, 
If anybody has any questions, go ahead and type those into the chat. We'll answer them as best we can. So Jill, are you ready? Ready, got my tea. Okay, so are you ready? ready? Coffee. Ha, ah, <laughs> water. <Cheers. laughs> All right. I think, I think Mark is up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So yes, every year I participate with the advanced students. I participate in all of the classes because I don't want to give somebody an, an assignment that I won't do myself. I was challenged this year by one of my friends and fellow students to do something different. So I took a different approach to my photography. I accepted the challenge and I present it to you here tonight as hidden details. And yes, there's a little surprise. Exactly. So Dennis, you're up first. So Jill, the gloves come off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring it on, baby. Bring it on. <laughs> if you if you open yourself up to this, um, you know, um, you know, um, we're we're always all beginners, and and the, as we see. Or, be, or, or as we are challenged to see things in new ways, um, sometimes that's all it takes. I, uh, so I'm stunned there's no people in these pictures, but. So that was part of the challenge, Dennis, that that's, that. my, that's, then, my, that's my jam. You know, and, and you know, somebody asked me about, you know, where, you know, where am I in, in my pictures? I'm in all my pictures. You know, I'm the person that's in every picture I make. And, and so I do see those elements. You are, you are jumping out of your, of your comfort zone into some things that, that, that I, I love the colors that, that you've chosen. I love the, the arrangement of things, the shapes, the, the, these, these, these qualities that you do apply to people because you feel comfortable in looking at these pictures, there's there's um, there's a sense of assuredness in this that 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 accompany each image. I, I would say the one thing that that I would push you to do is is to create that sense of moment in these because as as you've constructed these things, they become geometric kinds of uh, puzzles, and and really I think you're you're your role as a photographer is is almost in showing us the puzzle solved right um mm -hmm. if you go through these again there's the one that that um i get stuck on when i see it it's so lush um it it just feels like like this one the the introduction of red in there just just sings it it without it um it's just this this sort of re repetitive sort of um, um, play of light and shade and color. Introducing that red shows me something about you that I've actually always known is that there's this, this sense of moment, the sense of excitement, the sense of introducing something into that regularity that uh, um, celebrates it. And uh, um, to, to be a student and, and, and just to be a, um, a, a uh, um, a troublemaker here, I would tell you to make 50 of these, like figure out what that, what that element is in these that, that moves it up into that other place of, where it's not about people, it's really about you. It's about, it's about bringing that to anything you do. And, and those risks that you take in interrupting the rhythm of this is what makes this picture so successful. 
Um, I, 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 that red is not in nature anywhere. It's just so beautiful and rich and, and deep. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Did I hide the, the subject well enough at the beginning? That's a question I have. Uh, yeah, I think so. Here? No, at the, from, the, from the start. Yeah, I think so. OK. Yeah, I think, I think the, the reveal is, is, is right in the right place, so. OK. Jill? Um, well, also being an annual pass holder. <laughs> <laughs> you knew. You knew from the start, didn't I knew. You? I knew yeah, from the start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, years and years of waiting in line, we know there's so many ways that our eye go and how we focus on things. <laughs> The yes. details, it's the funny, I can tell right. Um, there's a clip put in a way that I think is interesting. I said, Picasso was a master of the abstract because master of realism. Mm -hmm. And and that that to me is to know how to, to show the, the true form of something is is then when you can divide it up and kind of and say like this is, you know, um, what, oh my God, no this you can tell what it is but you but you can't this so and another point mark that i see is um this is how people in general look at things um when they have anxiety a lot is they will then to quiet out things around them the world they go into center on focal points of subject matters wherever and it's interesting and you get lost with lines. And if you ever experience that, you kind of will go, I, I'll, you'll count these lines, one, two, three, four, five, you know, count that and see the, you know, um, vertical down complementing it. Um, it takes me into where it centers you is my point of doing this. Instead mm -hmm. of just being like, this is this ride. It takes you into the, every detail quiets the mind once you start really looking at how everything is there and made the real the going deeper into the the fabrics of of life in a sense so it's an interesting thing to do instead of the uh, space mountain but no look at the look at where the lines they meet you know questions how things are made what is that it's it's a really interesting thing to take in the true up close details of things but my favorite is the same as dennis's i just um that one with um, red. This is a very powerful image, and I can't tell what the red is. I don't know what it is, but I love that it seems soft. You know, the rounded curve subtly hitting the metal, the metal plate, and questions. Yeah, what, what do you want, or do you want to be continued on to the next image? And guessing, guessing what else is there. So, Jill, we'll go find it together. Okay, it's, is it a hidden Mickey? No, it's not. <laughs> It is not. It is not what you think. If you think about it, you can guess what it is. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I will, I'll make it fun to search, but, but it's nice. Nice to see you doing something different too yeah. and trying that, it's, it's great. Thank you guys. Thank you very and much. Let's do yes, more. No. I always more, always more. Yeah. I'm never done. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next artist, Mark Crace, welcome. Thank you, Mark. And uh, thank, I wanna thank everybody for joining us tonight. Your presence is truly appreciated. Um, for a lot of years, I've walked my neighborhood in San Pedro just to get some exercise. And I think long ago, I stopped really seeing it in any level of detail. Um, but in March, when folks started working remotely and all the kids were sent home from school, the sounds in the neighborhood really changed. And listening to all those sounds really kind of forced me or kind of invited me to kind of start seeing the place again. I start, you know, looking to, you know, where that sound came from, where the kids were playing, where the, where the parents were kind of chasing the kids around, trying to get their, do their homework and so on. It was a lot of fun. And I just started seeing things a little bit differently. So tonight I want to share some of the, the visual messages that my neighbors uh, sent to visitors to our neighborhood in San Pedro. I hope you enjoy them.
Mark Crace's welcome. Jill, you're up. I have lots of questions. Hi, Mark. Hello, Jill. <laughs> um, let me see. I had uh, a couple of things I was saying. So the, can you go to the first image? Um, the very first image was a very strong image to me. Sorry, second image, very strong image to me that I was making quite a comments on it as far as what I see. And it, it takes me into your whole thing of like how you perceive um, a home and who's in it, who lives in it, or even like how you perceive you when you go out, whether you're, you know, dressed up or rolled out of bed or whatnot. And it's interesting, the little details that I know are like, um, like you, they took the time to put a wreath on the door, even though it's, it looks a little, you know, old or weathered. Um, but there's still that sense of, it's a welcoming thought, you know, that they still, it's, it's just as welcoming as when you ornate. Um, they take the time to the hedges, you know, and them, but, but yet, you know, the, the gutter's rusty, the paint's chipping around the door and that's old, but, but there's still, you know, I, I'm busy. It's kind of like I take that, we've got a busy life. We're doing, I'll, I've got time to trim the hedges. I've got time to do this little sense of, of home by that wreath. And it's just the little things of, of the stuff like that, that if you like what you're doing with this series is to really take the time to notice what people are offering to kind of share with you in a way. Um, can we go to the, to the next ones? And this one, I don't know if, if some, like, and now I, I'm honestly with your images, I started questioning each one and I want to see who lives there and hear their story. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's interesting each, each one, because even, like there's always a whole bunch of little pot plants and it's not like they're sitting there doing any landscaping or anything, you know, this is how the house needs to look. They just like little plants and little pots like, a thing to add on that they take care of. Are you guys seeing me okay? I just got an alert that said my internet oh, is on. Fine. No, it's fine. I can hear you. I can see you. Okay. Um, yeah, this one. Okay, so the banner going up is, you know, the weathered banner, the steps, but it's like a brand new door with the modern letters like we're we're, you know, but it's so interesting because there's not even like the proper step into the front door. Like that's not to code, you know, and you're noticing these things, but we have this brand new great front door with these, with the mirror. It's just, uh, again, I, all of your images make me want to open the door and see what's within it. It's there's so much interest in this. It's a great, a great idea. I want to like you to do a whole bunch of different neighborhoods and stories and, you know, comparisons of these, because it's a great, a great, you know, series you're doing. Thank you. See some more. Can we see, yeah, see more again. Like this, this is funny. I mean, <laughs> the dog by with the big tiki guys <laughs> scare you out, you know, and, and this one, it's just like, it's great. Like you, you think the guy's like, uh, I question, is he from, you know, England and now lives in San Pedro and he's a runner. You know, come and goes, and you just, you just, you takes you. All of your images are like the story card of trying to picture what the family is like. So it's just so well done how it makes you think about each image. Thanks. So I, I'm going to riff on some of the things that you were talking about in that. Um, just like we get dressed and we go out, these are people's first impressions. These are these are. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm completely curious about who lives in these homes and, and what, what they felt was, was their best face forward. You know, like, whoa, we're gonna, we're gonna build this all out. And, um, and as you really start to study the details, it's like, it's like you meet somebody for the first time and, and, and you're, I, I forget there's that saying where you hardly hear what they say because you're thinking about what you're supposed to say, and and mm -hmm. what what you're saying in these is is about what they're showing, and and there's something really 
curious and beautiful. And, and you said something when you when when we when you introduced this work. We can't discount how much fun photography really is. It's it's like in a series like this, after you have a hundred of them, when somebody sees them in a gallery, they they think it's they think it's serious work. Um, Veronica and I went and saw serious work today, and the, and the guy who made the work talked about how much fun it was and, and how it's a world that he imagines. And this is not so different from that. And that making work has to have an element of fun. We, we, work, we work too hard in our lives. And uh, there's, there's, you know, and don't take this the wrong way. There's a frivolousness in this, in that, um, you know, somebody moves in and they paint the door a different color. Um, the, the house has been looking like this forever and somebody <laughs> decides it should look different. And that's, that's like, you find that sweater at, a, at, a, uh, um, at, at, at the Goodwill and you make it new, you make it, it, you make it yours. And, and you're, you're really doing some, some, some really beautiful documentary work at this. Because, uh, I mean, you could be photographing the pandemic, you could be going and photographing homeless people. That's not what documentary is. It's 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 it's. Um, and now I'm on Zoom. It's this wide, you know. Um, it's it's what you what you make it, and it starts with really simple, a simple premise, a, a couple of rules. I'm going to go for a walk, and I'm I'm going to make a picture on my walk, and 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 that builds into something that that has great meaning for people because. Um, whether we're renting houses or owning houses, it, it's where our life is happening. Um, it's where we sleep. It's where we uh, make a life. And, and uh, um, that, if you could go back to that first picture, Mark. Well, you had me there. <laughs> no, that the the one before that. Yeah, you had me there. Yeah, you. That I, I can only imagine. That. Mark, it's the one before that. That's the one. Yeah, in full disclosure, that's Dennis's front door. That's right. I, and, and, and also, I took this image nine months ago before I knew he was going to be making any comments tonight. So. Right. <laughs> so we need and to meet the, the people who are inside there, Dennis. I see What's some stuff story? I want to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, let me let me say, you know, with all this, and I really appreciate the comments. Um, it's a marvelous way to meet your neighbors as well. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people came out and said, "What the hell are you doing?" Right. You know, Can I help you? You know, what's what's going on? Why are you taking pictures of my house? So, it's, but and everybody was very when nice. When I was in Alaska in the Arctic, I was taking a picture of a guy's house. He came out with a gun, and uh, um, and asked me if I was finished. I said, "Oh yes, I'm finished." <laughs> So you never know who you're going to meet, but these are these are a, a wonderful set of images, and uh, you you could build on these. I think the the so good ideas also come up with good problems. So that as you, as you do San Pedro, this may not apply to to something like Los Angeles. Uh, it, it really applies to these these smaller, more more meaningful, more more special things. So, um, you know, we get this idea like, okay, I'm going to travel the whole world and photograph people's front doors in India and China, and um, it doesn't work that way. It, it it's like you photograph what you know and who you are, and and people get to know you through your pictures. I want to say one thing about this image, uh, Jill. You mentioned that it's not that step up is not a, it's not to code. Yeah. The irony is this is this is the home of a contractor. Of course, and no he's way. He's been working on. He's been working. He and his young wife. They've been working on this for about two years now. So it's a work in progress. That's so funny. It cracks me up, that, but that's not that's not the code. So you have to tell him that. That's me. <laughs> well, thank you both for the, for the comments. Really appreciate it. Keep yeah, going. Would like to. More continue this series, please. Oh, I, I still I'm shooting. I was out shooting two days ago. So it's, yeah. That's great. Yeah, some of these haven't changed. The one that you like, the second one, has not changed in a year. Sure. Others oh, change wow. on a weekly basis. It really is interesting to see how much people put into this and how little. 
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Jill. Our next artist, Tom Chang, A Quiet Moment. Hi, everyone. Good evening. The following picture I express my feeling at the coast, especially during this difficult time. Enjoy. Tom Chang's A Quiet Moment. Dennis, you're up. You know, I don't know whether it's the title or the pictures or the title and the pictures, but how a photographer and image maker tells their own story tells you everything about that person. And, and as they share that with others, um, people can share in that moment. These, these really are the quiet moment. And, and you know, there's the, there's, the, there's the technique and then there's what you do. And what you do is way more important than the technique every single time. If it's, if it's a technically driven picture, it looks that way. And, and if, it's a, if it's a picture that follows an idea or, or a, what you said in this difficult time, the picture reflects that meditative, that, that reflective, that, that, that honorable moment, that sense of that we're pulling these out of time and that, that um, and, and everything you bring to it, like this picture, the geometry of it is incredible. And, and if we go back a couple of pictures, the, the picture from, you know, uh, uh, right there, I know that place like the back of my hand. And still you're showing me something that, that we share and that um, I see it in a different way as well. And uh, I, I really, I, I'm touched by that. That uh, as many times as I've been there, um, you've shown me something new about this. And, and I, I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm really touched by that. It's beautiful work. I would love to see these in print. They, these could be um, just, just beautiful prints on the wall. So um, I would continue this project if you, if, you, if you haven't sort of put it in a box already, I, I would keep making this work. You, you have a real uh, connection to it. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I, I agree with you, Dennis. I, I like the long exposures that you've done here with these two, and it seems like they're, you know, at least 30 seconds, which, um, you know, it, it complements what you're saying of the quiet time. And when Mark was showing the images like this and sitting in this like complete quiet room, that was perfect too, to, to view these images and have the long exposure with so much of the vast, how you have like more of the sky, always the vastness of the sky with the long time of the water, um, it creates that quiet space. Even even in the one in Manhattan Beach there where you know it's always bustling and crazy, it's still that that gives you that moment of peace. This this is my favorite, Verdondo. Yeah. Um, just the, to still get the, reflection in a way underneath the the haze of you know i don't even know what the what was the clouds or the haze or what it was it's it's great how it elongates those pylons and does that and then and with it being the long exposure right you're not people on the p which is goes perfect with what you're saying the quiet space um they 
they feel also, I think with the blight and the long exposure, they also have a sense of, um, I don't know why I feel this way, but it's just like a sense of loneliness in a way or of missing someone. That's it kind of comes across just because of those, I guess, black and white in a way always kind of takes you in a past, in a past sense and just having that quiet time. But I think they're great. I'd like, I, I like this, how it's always the more sky too. I'd like to see um, them printed. There was a photographer in history, Gustav Le Gray, who was the first guy who made these pictures of, of water and sky. He had to sandwich them because the, the film would not take the exposure. And so uh, people talk about his work about this vastness and, and you, you have that in this work. There's this sense of, of, of timelessness and, and, and vast. The implication is that the sky goes up forever and uh, they're, they're really well done. That one too, the one going back, I know this point exactly too. It's so funny when you can recognize exactly yeah. where you were. Yep. But this one I love a lot too, because it seems like, um, you know, like a brush stroke. You know, you've got your paintbrush with these black things of the rocks going out like that, that adds to it with the contrast and the gray. You do a lot with very little. It's like it's black, it's white, it's gray, and then there's everything else. Nice work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. When I took the pictures, I feel just like a very calm, but something feels something underneath are going, you know, waiting for something to happen. <laughs> That's right. Right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Ladies and gentlemen, our next photographer, Joy Donis, Other Worlds. Uh-oh. Joy, are you trying to speak or are you remaining silent on purpose? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to unplug. Um, I feel the, the movement in this mixture of oil on water lets the imagination take off. Is it outer space? Is it a crevice under the ocean? Or does the photo take you totally somewhere else? Our mind and our imagination um, I feel allows us to explore in ways that opens new channels to view things. Each movement here is unique. Each movement is unique and let your imagination soar. Joy Donis's Other Worlds. Jill, you're up. Okay, hi Joy. Hi. I wrote, first thing I wrote was, <laughs> I said, these are so fun to explore and I, I'm totally lost at how you did this with oil and water. This one, this one and the orange one are, are the two, my favorite, this one. And then, um, just everything about it. Again, it's like it's like where you're not knowing what it is, and I'm just seeing shape and form and color. That same thing, where they're just so strong for what they are, and and how you created this moment with with you know oil and water. It's it, if you didn't say that too, and you weren't looking for that, it's exactly what you're saying. Some other world, where I'm just like I'm sitting there and I'm going on each one of these these globes, these spheres, and looking around and seeing where it is and where the light shadow is coming from and um, questions so much, but they're fun at the same time too, besides another one. Can I see some other ones, Mark? I said, 
yeah, and you feel in a way um, like they make me feel really small. Does that make sense? Like, like you're the incredible shrinking woman, you know, like that you're like this little person and this, this great world and this color that you've got here, this yellow, this one, the sharpness, I'm in awe of how you did this. And just, I, I would like, I would like to see these as well, printed large, huge, and just see, it would just make such a statement. Look at that. Did you know, Joy, when you started doing this, like, did it just happen with the very first one or how did you, how did you start this and think with oil and water and for it to develop into what, what you ended up getting out of it like this? I mean, the dark blue and, and balancing out the dark, this is the amber here like this. I mean, it's just, it all, it's perfect. It started, well, it started with Mark's creative day when his creative day is where I got to start to play with it. And then I started putting material underneath. Mm the glass that held the oil in the water and then stirred it so that there was move, constant movement. And so it must've been just so fun to sit there and oh, see all these was. things that were being made and then different lights and different sources to do this. Yeah, it was, it was so much fun. You know, those, Great idea. You know those models they make of DNA? It, yes. It, it, it's, it looks like it's the microscopic and then it's the, the pictures of the Voyager going out past Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, it, I think the most difficult thing you probably faced with this work is when do you make the picture? Um, like, I'm sure it changes every second. Um, uh, the shapes are exquisite. I mean, you can't, you, you, there's no algorithm that you could use to, to make this work uh, on the computer, but um, it, it really has this sense of, 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 of incredible moment. The, this one, this one, the, the, the rhythm of that, that round shape coming around the other one and getting larger in frame is, is unbelievable. Um, the, the, the one that, that Jill liked, I also love, I find it, it's almost like a, a cartoon. Um, it, it's like, I'm waiting for like the, uh, the Michelin man to, to run out there. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's this, it's these strange cartoon kind of shapes. And, um, um, I, I'm going to say two things. Um, uh, you should be making movies of this stuff. Uh, it, 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 there's there's just something if you put this to music um it would be incredible and now uh you you've you've actuated the um the part of my life that i hate but i can't help it i am i am a, an obsessed person so i would spot these in photoshop for days there are little dots in these things that um, uh, would drive me crazy. That little white dot um, on the, the, the rounded shape in the middle there, mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep with that in there. <laughs> um, I would make these things just be perfect. So um, uh, it's, it's the part of my life that, that um, my obsession is well-placed. Right. Um, um, I don't apply this to my life. I can apply it to my work. And uh, um, so, if if you if you know, you'd be you'd be uh, using the clone stamp on these like crazy. Um, and that, and what that would be would would bring the perfection of these things forward. So um, uh, they they are worth it. That's. I only work on work that's worth it. So uh, um, this is this is worth it. I, I used to hand tint photographs for weeks at a time, and this is this is that same quality of, of craziness. Beautiful work. I can Thank see you. this. Can, can you see this as an ex at an exhibit at LACMA? 
printed big and like you said, totally fine tuned, huge people Absolutely. would just stand there. I, I would see this in galleries. I could see it. Um, um, you know, we talked about this today in the gallery. Uh, what makes a person look at a picture twice? Everybody looks at pictures once. What makes people look at a picture twice? This is a picture I would look at twice. This was a picture I would put in my home and, and how I would acquire it is through a gallery and, and, and where it would wind up is um, you don't know where, you know, it, it, it would illustrate articles about things. It would, you could put this anywhere. Um, it's, it's a, it's one of those images that, 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 that attracts people. And then um, once you're locked in this maze of, of, of shape and form and color, um, hard to get out. So uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful set of images. Thank I you. Imagine if you made the move. So um, think about making 30 second movies. Thank you, I will. Very beautiful, Joy. Thank you. That one, go back to that one. I need to see that one one more time. Yeah, that's crazy. It really is. Yeah. What, what is. What is the big one in front? Is that, that's one of the oil bubbles? Yes, yeah. It's, stir, it's stirring it and then focusing the lens on the edge and capturing it as it go, and what goes by. You know, I tell my students this stuff at least once a term, maybe twice a year. Um, if you're not going to work on this, tell me, because I'll just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Thank you Dennis. Thank, Thank you, Joe. So if ever I will post, if, if we don't get it up tonight, I will send you the link in the email tomorrow to the video that shows you how to do this. Now that's just a start. Joy took it from there and went a completely different way. So how great. Awesome. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, our next artist, Evelyn Schmidt, Beach Shadows. Hello, everybody. Um, I love looking at shadows and especially the really long ones in the early morning and the late afternoon. They're so compelling, I decided they should be the subject of the photos. And so I've taken them out of the shadows and into uh, the limelight. Evelyn Schmidt's Beach Shadows. Jill, you're up. I'm up. Hi, Evelyn. Hi. Um, I love this concept. I think it's so great. Um, my favorite part, I think, is how elongated the shadows are, the time you did it at, you know, that you're not at noon, <laughs> you know? So it's so great to see these long lines. And like this one right here, the majority of all your images where you have a person in them, you're not identifying with an actual person, right? You're not seeing their face or their eyes. So I like that, that then they become themselves the shape and then you see the shadow that they create. So it's kind of like these two shapes playing off instead of it becoming you know, too much of a person. Um, can we go to the next ones? Yeah, this is the only, the only one that was the only one that has a person in it. I kind of wish that she had her, her back or the same thing because I like seeing the flow of the tide with that, with the line of her going across. But I like it when it wasn't identifying with um, an actual person. Okay. But the two, the two that I really liked were the skateboarder and um, 
the first one with the lifeguard stand. That one's actually very strong too. Wait, go back to that one, would you, Mark? That one? Yeah. Go back to the couple, you no, know, the couple on the beach. See, I like a lot of them. I mean, we'll go this one. The the flow, the white in the corner with the flow of her dress, you know, and then the shot. I mean, just everything from every black and white tone that you could have. It's just perfect. I've seen the grain in the sand complementing with the shadows. I just love this as just for a pure black and white image. It's just a strong image on its own, not necessarily part of the series, just on its own. It's a very strong piece that I like. Um, so then go to the, the skateboarder and the first one with the with the lifeguard stand. So yeah, no, not, yeah, this one. Um, these two together, I, I they just go right in line with, with perfect again, because it's like that same, you know, positive, negative, positive, negative, which I see. And that, and you're seeing, like you said, these shapes that people aren't looking at at this art form that, that we create with our shadows. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's got the lines of this. And again, him, it being the, the back of him, he turns into the shape. And then even the white against the darker ocean, it's just all very, you know, works perfectly together. It's just, just well, well done. I, both of these and then the first one the same thing just the lines and the angles not this one the the um this one with the sand all going the direction of one way and then the lines of the light the shadow of the lifeguard stand going the other crossing them just becomes graphically you know outstanding i like to see it you still see what it is you still associate with what it is but it isn't what it is it's the shadow of it so the skateboarder knocks me out. I am yeah. completely, the thing I know about being a photographer is that these things don't just happen. You make a lot of pictures, a lot of bad pictures to get the great picture. And when you great, get the great picture, it, it makes it all okay. You try, you try, you try, you try. And, and somehow in that right place, right time, everything falls together. I, at first, I didn't even see the ocean and the, and the umbrellas and the people. But as Jill was talking about, in this positive, negative space, this thing defies gravity. It, 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 the bowl of the, the, the shape of the bowl of the skateboarding um, place, is, it, it all falls into one. It looks like a ballet. And, and, um, when that happens, um, they talk about orchestras when they play the cool stuff. When it all works, they go out to the meadow and say, this is the one that goes out to the meadow and, and you, you win. The other thing that, that you're fascinated by, I am as well, the, as a commercial photographer, I'll tell you. So we never get breakfast, we never get dinner. We always have time for lunch because the light's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so photographers have long lunches talking about pictures and, and <laughs> that, that early morning light and that late in the afternoon light is, is the, it's the nature of photography. It's, it's about lighting. It's about writing with light. Um, go, to the, go to the one before this. Yeah, the, the, the lines in the sand are, are so perfectly constructed with the railing that you almost think you're looking at a dark building and, and you're, you're, the, the vision sort of is confounding. And uh, um, you know, what we do is we notice things. We're, we're keen observers. And, and the great thing about photography is that I don't have to paint this thing. I don't have to build it. I, I can go out with my camera and, I can, and I, when I discover it, I own it. It's mine, and and no one else can make it. Um, people can replicate it, but you own this, and and it feels that that sense of ground. Um, I I think this is the nature of it. I I don't ever need to see the reveal. I never see, need to see the person. I, I'll go back to the skateboard and the skateboarder and say this thing transcends that rule. But all the others that have the person in it, whether they're looking at camera or not, I don't find that 
to be as important. If, if I don't need to see the bird, I don't need to see the, the roller skate, it, all of those things, the, the relationship that you have in this shadow world is complete without any other reference. And uh, um, uh, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Um, if you wanna see somebody who works in shadow all the time, look at this woman, Susan K. Grant. She's in Texas and she builds shadow worlds. So um, all in her studio, but these are exquisite. Um, I'm also, you can't look at light without seeing shadow. They're, they are the yin and yang of photography and uh, beautiful work, beautiful work. Thank you. Our next artist, Joyce Cardwell, Birds and the Bees. Hi. During COVID-19, flowers continue to attract the birds and the bees to the South Coast Botanic Garden. I hope you enjoy. Joyce Cardwell's Birds and the Bees. Jill, you're up. <laughs> Am I up? I thought Dennis was up. I think wait, wait, I'm... wait. No, Jill's up. Dennis started oh, last. Think... No, I think I'm up. All yeah, right, Dennis. go ahead. So, so everything I know about these pictures, I know, and still you've transcended all those things that I know. Um, uh, I know how you do these, and still, I'm, I'm, you turn me into a kid. It's like, I just, I can't help but just love these pictures. This one, in particular, just looks like the lunar landing. It looks like, like the, the first landing of the moon. That, that, that little guy is just suspended in space in a world that, that, that they're exploring, and, and, uh, You've transcended the, the smallness of it and, and made this, this thing that's as big as, as, as it can be. Um, uh, the, you have great patience, great sense of, of moment, and, um, and, and you're using your camera just as good as anybody could ever use it. Um, great colors, great, great great ideas because the you said very little at the beginning but but pictures that are as good as these you don't need to say much about them they they speak for themselves and uh the textures this one also um i know i know what this stuff is in this picture and still um i i i can't help but give myself over to to being a, a kid again and and, and celebrating that kind of moment. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's an exquisite image. Um, um, we've talked about this before. I would love to see this like bigger than, bigger than life. It's crazy. Jill? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know much about doing wildlife and doing this. And these are just great. I mean, that one you just posted of like the two birds talking to each other. <laughs> like, that's fantastic. This, you just, again, it's kind of like, you know, these images that are taking you 
close up like the oil and water, you, you want to do something like that. So you don't have that connection with birds like this. And really, no, you just say, oh, there's a bird. It, it flies, you know, and this is like a whole, <laughs> a whole different, you know, relationship. And then going into the um, bees, see this detail, what they're doing. It's just so amazing. Um, my favorite one, Joyce, is the, um, is the white flower with the bee. Um, that one. Yeah, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, this is this is the one that just I actually was looking at this and playing with this a little earlier, too, and thought um, it'd be interesting to um, try a different version, a little bit of this, even though I love this as is, I thought to just kind of crop out where you're just having um, as much as the white flower with the bee in the center, be an oh. interesting kind of minimal piece um, with a, you know, mat around it or, you know, just it just it's so strong i mean it, and it's like what you said dennis of this thing going into space it seems like it's slow motion going in but but i'd like you to just see what you think to play around with that and see if you see it in a different way um because that's just right I, where probably, it took me. I probably took 1700 pictures you bet the, you did i know you did yeah but this, but I just mean post post crop it in Photoshop just to um, see what that looks like just to see what you think it's so strong this flower because it's so soft these petals you can feel every texture and then the depth of this bee just really really strong image. Thank you. I love the fact you took seventeen hundred images. You know one <laughs> of the things I teach in school is like professionals make everything look easy. And it looks easy well, what, to you try and do it. What's great is is not having film and not having to worry about paying for <laughs> right. <laughs> which which is great because it's never just that shot. Again, it's like you just weren't there. You were patient. You made it. You made it happen. You know, it's like it, and it's patience. Photography is patience. Mark, would you go back to the two birds? You could put that up in a marriage counseling office. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> they were fighting. You bet they were. <laughs> Over nothing. That's, yeah, yeah really. What, that's one entered so the other one's space. I had a marriage like that. <laughs> but I like the color too of that one. I like that it's like a brownish burgundy against with the with the yellow birds and it's not just green at the back of the, you know those complementary to each other too beautiful work thank you ladies and gentlemen our next art artist carol skurlock city of angles hello everybody um i was the one who persevered with my original project idea uh, exploring LA despite the challenges of the pandemic. Um, so I've captured some urban abstractions in what I call the city of angles. Carol Skurlock's City of Angles. Jill, I guess you're up. I'm up. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, can we, can you start from the beginning again? So I think it's really great that you stuck with your concept and going through um, COVID with all of this, especially being out in downtown shooting. Um, 
That's great. And so, yeah, continue going through. Um, one question for you before I make comments on the architecture, because it's two things. I want to know um, if you normally like include people in, in the images, if that was just part of it being like their um, part of the architecture statement, because you said it was a, I'm asking you this because you said it was more based on the architecture style. Yes, I um, was interested in um, evidence of people and unfortunately I didn't find more people. So I, su I suppose this is the only one. <clears throat> well, there was another one, but um, yeah, mostly it's uh, geometric abstraction. Okay, this one, this one's oh. fantastic. Um, you know, when I was back at Parsons, I am um, actually in New York, I actually worked with a woman on a documentary about Bernice Abbott. And uh, it was interesting to learn more about the work and stuff. And so I see this in two of these images, especially, and this is one of them. Love that the shadow is hitting her face, um, crossing everything out, wearing the mask, documenting that time. Yet yeah, great, great lines, great geometry of what you're saying with the angle of the the pole going down with the light shadow and the steps, just fantastic. I mean, everything, the crisscross, it's all so strong. And uh, then there was this other one that was my favorite of yours. Um, I don't know if I, number four, I don't know. Number four, keep going, keep going. It had more to the building, like all in one. Keep this one. So go forward again. No, yeah, this one. This one um, is just timeless, even though it has some more of the mirrored, you know, a newer architecture to me. I see this totally printed, like like we're saying on an Agfa paper, polytone to it, the white just, I wouldn't know if you shot this now with the style that it has, or if you shot it in 1950, you know, some of the architecture, it's just, so compliments yet uh, how to explain it exactly just it's one of those timeless images the perfection of light shadow black white vertical horizontal it just so well done this was shot through larry bell's sculpture in front of mocha oh yeah you know, really cubes? yeah the cube boxes <laughs> i love yeah i love reflections <laughs> yeah just, just, I, I just, I, that's the best compliment I honestly can say is it's timeless. It's one of those ones where it, it looks more like the ode to, to film photography to me. You know, it, 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 it makes a, a beautiful statement about architecture without it being architecture. Um, it, it is that timeless sort of comment on, on a built world, uh, on, a, on a constructed world that whenever you see a building um, like um, uh, Disney Hall, um, Gary's a great architect and, and I've seen people follow the prompt, which is that they stand in the right place, so to speak. And, and this, this and, and you have a few pictures in here that sort of transcend that. Um, You've made good rules for yourself about about loving this this sense of angle and and this sense of uh, uh, reflections and and light light bouncing off things and 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 even when you when you move into a more abstract um, uh, place, I think the one follows this. Yeah, this um, even losing the detail in in the highlights, it, it just creates this otherness that that um, it, it wouldn't work if, if if everything was was correct but within that abstraction you see this this geometry this this angular the, the rule the rules you've made and and as you follow those there's a logic to it there's a sense of of, of, of rhythm and 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 balance and and strength it's it's really quite beautiful work. Um, uh, we go back years and years ago, all this architectural work was done by men. Um, and, and 
seeing another vision or another lens to see this work through is it's it, it's a great celebration of the work in in a different light and uh, um, you 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 should keep doing this there's there's one i don't like and and the one i don't like has has uh, letters in it and uh, um, because it it kind of ruins the metaphor uh, this one oh okay. um, yeah it, it, it's there's not all pictures work and uh, um, so this has elements in it that that um, I would follow, and, but then there, it's really hard to ignore written things. I, you feel compelled to read them. I think it's because we see so many stop signs. <laughs> you know, it commands us to read it. And, and in, in, in creating these pictures that, that are beyond information and, and move into artistic creative vision, um, we have to be careful that that um, we we aren't we aren't breaking our own rules, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, beautiful time of times of day, great choices of location, and uh, um, yeah, it's great to see you out with your camera documenting a city that has, in some respects, been over documented, but not not the way you see it. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to our final presentation tonight. Tammy Johnson, Apron Strings. Well, thank you for hanging out with all of us and um, getting to the end here. Um, this project was inspired by the need I had this year for comfort food and going back to childhood memories. Um, they say nostalgia helps improve your mood, so pull up the bar stool. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Tammy Johnson's apron strings. Well, Dennis, you're up first. So I am just simply knocked out by these. Um, you shouldn't be able to do this with with black and white, but there's there's a, a, a an engagement with with just what you said. This topic of comfort food that that just sings. Um, th um, that poor is as good as poor as it gets. Um, the, they, they, they only pay you about 50 grand for that. So, um, uh, you should put that in, in your back pocket, like you can do this. Um, but the oven picture, um, kills me. The, there's a, there's a quality of a, of a, of, of sunlight up in the left-hand corner there that just makes me think I've gone to heaven to have an apple pie. And, and the picture of, of the dough is as good as anything I've ever seen. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a portrait. It's those, those fingers are like a face and, and it just makes you feel like, like, so my sister's gonna be out here next Monday. She makes pasta. We can't wait for her to come out. Um, homemade food doesn't have to be all about color. It doesn't have to be about the, the the expectations that we have of what baked good looks like. When you when you when you play by your own rules, you're not getting in line in back of everybody who has already done it. You're making your own line. You're making you're making people rethink what they thought it had to be. And uh, um, you're you're a great thinker. Because um, it's not just photography; it's really about. There's a sense of wonder in these. I wonder if I can make a picture in black and white that conveys this sense of of comfort, sureness, craft, 
um, how, how does it reference things in black and white that we know from 100 years ago? And then how do we bring that forward into, into, this, into this time? Beautiful work. Thank you. We did a well, lot of eating fun. this year. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> That's funny. Um, that dough picture, Tammy, I said the same thing. I wrote down in my notes, dough, exclamation mark. Um, yeah, just everything about it from the depth of field to the detail of the hands to the texture of the dough. You can just feel the flower there. It's awesome. And something about these, how it goes against the other, the you know, older hands with the younger hands, it's it represents just like what you're saying, such a generational sharing of passing on of the of the recipe of family, of comfort, of secureness. Um, it's exactly it's a, that feeling that we all kind of want, that that sense of home. Well, well done in every manner, every image actually. Thank you. Can you go, can you go through a little bit more? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, see, okay, like go with the young hand. It's interesting if we just, um, like this one we go through. It's like sh the younger hand and serving the, uh, you know, whatever cook, it looks like soup, but whatever is being made, you know, at that moment with the, with the apron on too, which is the old school. Um, it's neat. And then it goes on to the next image, which is Mark. Yeah, it's again, the texture the cracked eggs, six eggs it took in that. That's a lot of eggs <laughs> <laughs> in this recipe. So that's the younger to this, to that, to like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to make this because it's her, the younger hands of doing this for the first, the first time. It, that's what it seems to me. It's just really nice, this whole passing of the baton, so to speak, of how to do this. I love the steam coming out of the pot. Yeah. That always and the old, pie, the old tools, which is great. Like the old kind of pie thing, this yeah. old fruit crusher, you know, the old um, strainer and the mason jar, but, but you're doing it now in newness, which is great. It's like, it's again, bringing the old into the new. See, it's beautiful. Yummy green. Yeah, the noodles are actually my great grandmother's recipe. So, you know, there's no amounts in anything. It's just take the eggs and add the flour and mix it up. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun to redo it too. And then have my daughter and my mother um, being the models for the pictures. It was a lot of fun. That's really That'd be really great to put together the book with the recipe. We are, that's the next part of the project. So by the, by the end of the year, we should have the cookbook with all the family recipes in it. Oh, that's great. great. That's great. It's gonna be awesome, Tammy. Yum. Well, gang, thank you for another awesome evening. Thank you photographers for sharing your work. Thank you family, friends, and interested photographers for coming to join us tonight. Um, thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Jill, for your words of insight. It was awesome. Um, you guys are all welcome to join us in this, in this journey. And you know, it didn't start out looking like this in January. I can tell you that, gang, right? In January, it's a disaster. And I'm always flabbergasted is, how are we going to get to November? But you know what? Through effort and teamwork and togetherness, we all put it together. You know, we build these great portfolios. Um, the reason why I invited Jill and Dennis to be part of the team tonight is Jill and Dennis are joining the Creative Photo Academy team next year to be part of the Advanced Photography Program. You know, like I said, we'll have six classes in Advanced Photography. Jill and I are going to do one on style and presenting your work. Dennis is going to do a class called your neck, making your next picture. I'm going to be again, leading the project group. Corey uh, Savory will be leading the three inspirational images classes throughout the year. Um, there's plenty for all of you to join us, whether it's in boot camp or intermediate or advanced, 
Hopefully you'll look for that as you're coming along. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of this. Any final words, Jill? Yeah, I'd like to say two things. One, all of you that did your artwork, I was beyond impressed, did not expect some of the work that I saw, just great. I mean, great work by everyone. Just just really um, made my night for that. And, and Mark, I just wanna to say to all the other people that are not in the class to help promote his team bills and what he does is, you know, I did four years of a major in photography from, a, from Parsons School of Design, great educators. And I never once saw the amount of passion from any teachers and what Mark gives to his students. That's from an outside point of view, just because he's, he's great. And I hope you all try and uh, take some classes from him. Thanks, Jill. Dennis, any parting words? So I've reviewed work for 20 years or so. Um, I was scared tonight. I was scared for the person that followed the previous person because um, I didn't want to follow any of these people because each, each person did something that was so great that when you said, okay, now we're going to move to this person, I was going, oh man, I wouldn't follow that last person. Um, but, but your entire class did something that was so special. Um, one teacher and everybody did something different with the same, same prompt, the same, same sense of engagement, the same passion and, and, and that challenge to, to, to overcome obstacle and, and to persevere to um, making something that, that represents the best of who we are. Um, making art is a messy process. Um, it doesn't come together until you cook it, right? And then you put it on the table <laughs> and um, it looks easy. It looks, when it's done, people look at it and go, well, you just uh, take your camera out and make some pictures, is that right? And, and, and for your, your viewer, it's supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like hitting a home run is easy. Nobody sees batting practice. Nobody sees getting hit by the ball. Nobody sees getting booed and, 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 and like going into a slump. But after you, you do something like what we've seen tonight, it's all worth it. It's, this is the best part of who we are. This is how it expresses something that, that isn't about the world. It's about, it, it shows the world something. And uh, I'm, I would do this um, forever. Uh, anytime you ask, um, I didn't know you before suddenly I knew you. And um, you're one of the, Mark, you're doing something really special. This is the new college. Um, this, is, this is the place where people would go to learn. And uh, this is all about lifelong learning. And uh, I, 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 I can't thank you enough for inviting me. Jill, it's great to meet you. It's nice great to, to meet hear. you too. It's great to hear that people can survive Parsons in New York. Well, it's been a long time. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I know what it's like there. But, uh, you know, we all survive education and move into these places that give us the thing that we still want. And uh, um, it, it's, it's you, I'm surprised how accessible it really is. How you, if you go looking for it, you can find it. And Mark, you're really doing some some remarkable things here. Thank so, you, guys. Uh, I, I, everybody should be really thinking. Like, I just had an experience with a teacher that's unlike anything else I've ever experienced. So that's real. Um, yep. Real. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jill. Thank you, Dennis. Students, thank you for your sharing. Thank you for watching. Okay. You guys will get a link to the video tomorrow if you want to watch this again. Um, you can share with family and friends. Um, the Creative Photo Academy is here to serve you guys, and Pulse Photo is here to make your photography fun and easy. Thank you. Um, good night, everybody. Good night, Happy everybody. Thanksgiving to all. Be safe, and we'll see you all real soon. Thank well. you. Guys. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.